Doug, 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 Doug. Hey Dusty, what's up? Oh, uh, well I was up in the attic. Uh, don't ask me why, I can't even remember. But I was up there and I saw that picture back from when I was a puppy. Look at it, you're in it too. Yeah. Yeah, boy, I really look different, huh? <laughs> I'll say. Somehow you actually look older, which is pretty weird. Well, you know, the camera adds a few years. Well, anyway, it got me thinking about the old days. Uh, Doug, do you remember when I was just a little puppy? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me that story again? Sure, buddy. You know, it all started when I moved into the new house. I went to the backyard, and that's when I heard a strange noise. There, little guy. Where did you come from? Um, <clears throat> my name's Doug, and um, I just moved in. Oh, uh, are you hungry? Here, <laughs> take some of that. Yeah, <laughs> pizza makes everything better, doesn't it? Um, hey, uh, let's get you inside, eh? Come here, little guy. Come on up. There you go. <coughs> I think I'll call you Dusty. This episode's called Lost and Found. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19, verse 10. Whew. There. Ah. Spring is here and the garden is ready. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Wow, this smells amazing. Yeah, aren't the flowers nice? The flowers? No, I, I meant the dirt. I'm getting mulch, a hint of cedar. This is the perfect spot to hide my bone. Oh, no, 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 I don't think so, Dusty. There's no digging in here. Then what do we make it for? Well, it's just for, for looking at. For looking at? <laughs> okay, Doug, you almost got me there. No, 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 no. I mean it, Dusty. No digging in there. But all that beautiful dirt. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to stay that way. Aww. Hear that, Dusty? Oh, this is great. Let's take a break now for a quick how-to segment. When you got a problem and don't know what to do, it's Doug and Dusty with the how to. Not! I think we all did great. We all did. We did good. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to How To with Doug and Dusty. I've got my pal Dusty here, and we're ready to show you how to do stuff. Okay, well, today's question comes from Brent. Oh. I knew a guy named Brent once. He was, that's a, he was a cool guy. Yeah, maybe it's the same guy. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Brent writes, Dear Doug and Dusty, that's us, how do I get along with my siblings? I know I'm supposed to love them, and usually I do, but sometimes they make me really, really mad. Yours truly, Brent. Hmm, that's a good question. You know, How do you get along with your brothers and sisters, your family, right? Hmm. Sometimes the people that you live with aren't so easy to live with. What? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Oh, no, 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 nothing. I'm just agreeing with Brent is that sometimes, you know, our family members can really get on our nerves. What? Well, I get on your nerves? No, I wasn't saying that. I was, you know. Well, how? When? What? What do I do? Dusty, this is not really the appropriate time with the kids. No, no, no. no. You, what, you don't think I can take it? That's not what I meant. I'm just... Well, oh, okay. So you think you're so easy to live with? I never said that. Well, okay. Let me tell you something. 
You snore really loudly. I do not. I, I, I do not snore. Yes, you do. It's so loud, I can hear it from outside. Okay, okay. Uh, let's get back to Brent's question here, okay, Dusty? Yeah, let's do that. Even thinking about it makes me irritated. It's like, a, like an elephant with a tuba stuck in his trunk. Okay. How to get along with your siblings? That was a question, right? Yeah. All right, that's easy, Brent. Here's what you do. You get yourself a, a nice pair of noise-canceling headphones, the, the really expensive kind, and you put them uh, you put them over your ears like so. And uh, yeah, make sure you uh, adjust as needed. That's important. Uh, okay. And then next, you're going to uh, you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need a sleeping mask. Yeah, a sleeping mask. Just make sure you put that over your eyes, adjust as needed, and then you're ready for the final step, which is a blanket, a nice, uh, nice heavy blanket. You can toss that over your head, and uh, yeah, and then uh, once it's draped over your head and you adjust as needed, then you can uh, you can go about your life. That's how you deal with your siblings. It's really that simple, Brent. Now your life will be as normal as you can possibly make it. You know, your siblings won't bother you anymore. <laughs> this is terrible advice. Doug, it sounded like you said, tameable head lice. What? Oh, Doug, no. that's, just, that's just rude. I, I, I wouldn't, kids, I wouldn't do that. Kids, don't do that. What? No, I just, oh, never mind. Kids, this has been How To with Doug and Dusty. Don't forget to send us your questions and we'll try and do better next time. Bye. Bye. That was good, that was really good. I good. think that okay. went really well. I was walking over there falling around. Did no, that, was, that, was that was great. Good that advice, was, you just ignore you your siblings? I did, I think we all did great. We all did, we did good. Hey kids, thanks for watching my new show. If you want to see more Faithful content, head over to our website at faithful.com. There you can watch videos, print coloring sheets, write to the characters like me, and even sign up for our kids club. Just don't forget to ask an adult before heading online. Hope to see you there. And now, back to the show. I got an Hey, come on in, guys. Come on in. I am so glad you're here. I've got someone I want you all to meet. Oh, a dog. dog. Oh, he's so cute. What's his name? His name is Dusty. Come on out, Dusty. Oh, my God. Oh, Dusty. Hi, Dusty. It's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, could you guys uh, watch him for just a minute? I've got to go inside. Yeah. For yeah. sure, possibly. Okay, cool. All right. Dusty. Okay. So cute. It's adorable. Oh, good job. Ooh, what's wow. this? Mm, that's my squeaky toy. Yeah, it's really good. Give it a try. Wow. <laughs> Why, thank you, Dusty. Mm, that's my rope. It's a really, really good rope. You yeah. can give it a pull. It's really cool. Ooh. Blah. Ew! Oh. I mean, thank you, Dusty. This is great. Um, well, do you know any tricks, Dusty? Can you shake a paw? It's so cute when they do that. Like, look, shake. Uh, how about this one, Dusty? Roll over. Mm. No, you gotta, kinda like this. Oh, okay. Woof. This is fun. Eh, we'll work on it. Do you know any other tricks? Ta-da! Dusty, what did you do? Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, what's the big idea? Time for a quick prayer break!
Hi, boys and girls. Pastor Doug here. Have you ever wondered what is prayer? Prayer. 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 In this series on prayer, we're going to be looking at all that God has revealed to us about prayer through his son, Jesus, and through his word, the Bible. Is prayer sort of like talking on the phone? Is it like concentrating our thoughts? Perhaps it's like shouting really loud. Hello, I need to pray to someone. Or maybe it's writing a letter. Maybe prayer is like putting a message in a bottle and sending it out to sea, hoping that somehow, someday, somebody might find it and answer it. You see, prayer is sort of like uh, some of those things, talking on the phone, for example. But it's not like sending a, a desperate message in a bottle to a distant, mysterious, or unknown God. There is someone who hears us when we pray. Jesus. Believe you that. see, so prayer can be like talking on the phone, yeah, except for that we don't actually like... need a phone to do it. We can simply talk to God. Sometimes we can concentrate our thoughts better when we do things like uh, fold our hands, or bow our heads, close our eyes. These things help cut out other distractions so that we can just pay attention to God. And then we can speak to him either out loud or simply in our minds. The choice is up to us. We can talk to God about anything, and we can talk to him freely in prayer. That's really quite amazing when you think of it. I mean, you can talk to God the same way that you would talk to a, a close friend or family member, telling him things about uh, home or school, things that make you happy or sad, questions, concerns that you have. Maybe you even just want to thank him for things that he's blessed you with, for things that he's provided for you and your family. These are all great things that you can speak to Jesus about in prayer. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. But next time, we'll talk about how Jesus himself prayed. That's right. Jesus prayed. Okay, we'll see you then. Let's see where we left off. Hi, Mr. Bruce. What's all this dirt flying around? Have you met Doug's new dog, Dusty? Er, hi. Better behave there, Dusty. No more getting into my garden there, eh? Mm, I'm sorry about your face. Uh, the fence. <laughs> Dog's making a mess in my begonias. Oh boy, I've really done it now. Don't worry, Dusty. Mr. Bruce is really nice. He'll forgive you. No, no, it's not that. <laughs> Look at the garden. Doug specifically asked me not to mess up the garden, and now I'm a. You're what, Dusty? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, what did you say, Dusty? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bad dog. Oh, Dusty, come on. I'm sure it'll be okay. <laughs> oh, it was nice meeting you all, but I better be moving on. No one wants a bad dog around. Oh, come on, Dusty. It's just one mistake. That's all it takes. Just one. Hold your horses there, Dusty. We can figure this out. How? I don't know. Let's say you do run away. What then? Hmm. You're out there, alone. A small dog in a big world. No place to live, no people to care about you. Soon you get picked up by animal control. They book you. Now you live in a cage. Your only friend is a blanket named Blanky. It smells like old cheese and yogurt. What flavor was the yogurt? And how old is the cheese? Like, aged or rancid? Um, rancid. You managed to escape with Blanky, but now you're on the lam, running from the law for the rest of your life. Sounds tough, but I'll have to manage. Move away. That's only one possibility. But if you stay and you make it up to Doug somehow. Mm, like how? Maybe by doing all of his chores. That's a start anyway. 
You'd have to learn to fold the laundry. You'd also have to learn to prepare all of his meals. After that, you need to do the dishes, all of them. Mm, maybe we could buy a dishwasher. You've got to earn this, Dusty. No dishwashers, only hard work will pay off this debt. And when you're done all of those chores, that's just getting started. Next, you'll have to duff the house, wash the windows, mop the kitchen, scrub the toilet, and vacuum. No, 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 not the vacuum. Anything but the vacuum. Wait, you'd rather live on the run? At least you'd have a home. I'll tell you what to do, Dusty. You dig yourself an even bigger hole, larger than the one in the garden, so big that you can hide in it forever. You keep going until you hit Australia, and then you find the bone of a dinosaur. You bring it back to the surface. You sell it to a museum. You'll be rich forever. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah, I'll go with David's idea. That's ridiculous. That would never happen. They're right, Dusty. A hole all the way to Australia? Well, well, I liked it, David. Thanks. You could try asking Doug for forgiveness and apologizing. That would never um, work. That's a no. terrible no, that's idea. That's Why would you even you suggest it? Okay. No. Thanks for all the help, guys, but the mess is too big and Doug's going to be out any minute. It's just better if I leave now. Doug, 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 we need to pause. I'm out of snacks. Bible Bites with Doug and Dusty. Mm, I can't find it anywhere. Well, where was the last place that you looked? I don't know. You don't know? Oh, hey there, kids. It's time for our Bible story. And it wasn't under the desk. Well, <laughs> sorry, everyone. It, it really is time for our Bible story, but it's just that Dusty's lost something. What was it that you lost again? I can't remember. You can't remember? Okay, well then maybe we should just get started. Oh yeah, Doug, you tell the Bible story. I'm gonna go look for the thing. All right, let's do that. All right, our Bible story today comes from the Bible in the book of Luke chapter 15. When Jesus would teach, all kinds of people would come to hear him. These people were considered sinners. No one wanted to be around them, except for Jesus, who didn't really seem to mind. But then, of course, other people were asking, why was Jesus, this holy man, spending time with these wrongdoers, these sinners? And one group, especially the Pharisees, didn't really like this at all. And that's when Jesus told three short stories called parables. The first one is about a lost sheep. Jesus said, suppose a man had a hundred sheep and he loses one of them. Won't he leave the 99 in the open country to go find that one sheep? And he'll search for it until he finds it. And when he finds it, he will joyfully put it on his shoulders and go home. And then he'll call his friends and neighbors together and he'll say, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Jesus said, I tell you, it will be the same in heaven. There will be great joy when one sinner turns away from sin than there will be for 99 people who do not need to turn away from sin. The second parable Jesus told was a lot like the first. He said, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and she loses one of them. She'll light a lamp and sweep the whole house. She'll search carefully until she finds that coin. And when she finds it, she'll call her friends and neighbors together and she'll say, be joyful with me. I found my lost coin. I tell you, Jesus said, it's the same in heaven. There is joy in heaven over one sinner who turns away from sin. The last of Jesus' parables is a little longer. It's about a father and two sons. And it goes like this. There was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me my share of the family property. So his dad divided his wealth between the two sons. And the younger son took all that he had and left for a far country. There he spent all his money on wild living, doing whatever he wanted. Well, soon he had no money left, and he decided to go find work because he had to. Mm, no, Thank you. No. In this economy, 
The only I job he could so. find was feeding pigs. And he was so hungry that even the food of the yeah, pigs sure. looked good to him. And then he said, how many of my father's servants have more than enough to eat? I should go home. Maybe my father will hire me like one of his servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was filled with love for his son. He ran to him and wrapped his arms around him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He is found. And so they celebrated. Now, remember the older son? He had stayed home this whole time. And as he came back to the house, he heard celebrating. He called one of the servants and said, What's all this noise? The servant replied, Your brother has come home, and your father is throwing a party in his honor because he's back safe and sound. Well, the older brother became angry. He refused to go in, so his father went out and begged him. But he answered, All these years I have worked for you like a slave, and I've always obeyed your orders, and yet you've never even given me a, a goat to celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours, who's wasted all your money, he comes home and you throw him a party? The father said, My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate because this brother of yours was dead, and now he is alive and he is found. You see, Jesus told these stories to explain why he was spending time with these tax collectors and sinners. It's true, these people had done wrong things. Like the son in the story, they had chosen to run away from God and go their own way. But also like the son in their story, they desired to come home to their heavenly father. Have you ever done something wrong? Maybe something that you regret? Have you ever rebelled against your parents or against God? You know, we might think that we can't be forgiven. We might think that there's no going back or that things just can't be made right again. But Jesus teaches that that isn't true. God loves us and there's nothing that we can do to change that. He sent his son Jesus so that we could be forgiven no matter what our mistakes may have been. Jesus desires that the lost be found. Well, that's a nice story. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Hey, speaking of, did you find what you lost? I did. Well, what was it? I was my train of thought. Your train of thought? <laughs> Dusty. Well, about I found it. Well, that's good, I guess. All right, kids, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. And now, back to the show. Thanks for all your help, guys, but the mess is too big and Doug's gonna be out any second. It, it's better if I just leave now. Dusty? It's okay, Doug, you don't have to say anything. I'm, I'm already leaving. Dusty? Sorry for being such a bad dog and thanks for taking care of me all these years. <laughs> Dusty, wait. Look, just because you make one mistake doesn't mean that you're not my dog anymore. It doesn't mean that I love you any less. You're not gonna kick me out? What, of course not. I don't have to live on the streets or get thrown into prison by animal pet control? No. Am I gonna have to be your slave for the rest of my life? No. Or dig a hole to Australia? Dusty, you don't have to do any of those things. I forgive you. But you should stop digging in the garden. Oh, absolutely, Doug. I won't ever dig in the garden again. I won't even... We can help clean up before oh. we go. What? Yeah, come on, guys. That would be great. And you too, Dusty. Come on, let's put it all back.
Thanks for watching. Faithville is a donor-funded ministry. Head over to faithville.com to find out more.